which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. July 3rd morning commissioners meeting. We have Albert from the uh, auditor's office, all three commissioners and the county attorney present. First on our agenda is uh, department updates. Um, John Geyer, Highway Department. Morning, John. Morning. South Akron on the south side of the road, um, and it's going to require an eight inch culvert. Just want to pull up. You say you've been up there? There's John Flint went out there and look. There's no conflict other than it needs a culvert. <coughs> okay. Uh, any questions on commit 2021? No. a motion to approve. So moved. Second. All in favor? Motion carries three out. Uh, bring up speed on what the guys are doing. Uh, they've been patching holes, changing culverts. Um, they've been running that brush cutter. Uh, still mowing the road sides, and they started laying cut. So I've had a lot of compliments on the brush cutter. It really looked good. 450 North was one of them. Yeah. Um, but I did get. Uh, I'll have to get what you have to take for a while. The limit's not going to spray your tractors and stuff. Mm. So I bet it needs, needs to be trimmed. Needs to be trimmed. Yes. Yeah, we I think it was over by Richard's Dairy Farm. Uh, Kessler's Lake came along and said, yeah, mm -hmm. like one and a half. I didn't hear Okay. Yeah, we've been trying to address a few. We've got a few calls. And, and Brian's called me on a couple of places. We've been trying to get some spots here and there. <coughs> Yeah, if you think of it, let me know. I think that was it. I'm not, not thinking about it. I think that was where it was at. I'll try to send somebody up that way. <laughs> Check it out. They're not that far as it is. But yeah, we've gotten a lot of positive feedback from that machine. It does a nice job cleaning things up. In fact, Kosciuszko County, uh, I don't know if they've come over and looked, but they called me about it because they've got one like we had that just chops it or chopped it. Uh, and they heard about it. Mo did. Mo checked it out last week. Did he? he told me. Yeah, they wanted to come see it and see what it was doing. They were thinking about switching. Good. So, it's just a lot cleaner. It leaves the public a lot happier, I think. Yep, it was good for us. Um, I wanted to let you know about Bridge 50. Uh, last time I talked to you, uh, before construction was planning on starting about this week because AT&T was going to put their fiber in or get their fiber change. Um, Justin Sherman from USI, he had told me that AT&T contacted him and that had changed. They had a new computer system where they did their scheduling. They switched over and kicked their project out of switching that, the way I understand it, and it bumped them out. So their scheduling for switching that got changed and they didn't have a date set now. <laughs> <laughs> Sounded like a poor excuse to me, but uh, no big hurry, it's just cost us money. Yeah. We should know something later this week on when they're gonna do it. Um, okay. what Justin told me is right now it shouldn't be costing us any money at this point. But it will eventually. Eventually, it very well could. So, can we get at t to pick up part of that path? And that's what Justin had said. And once it does, we should be able to fall back on at t We'd love to send him a bill. I would love to send at t a bill. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have documentation. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it should kind of fly a while this one. Yeah. But uh, I don't have any 
make definites for you on that right now. But we should be in contact with them this week after the holiday. Um, I did have with with me today and I sent it in my packet uh, a task order for Taser with USI. And this is, uh, we do this every couple of years. It's to help us upload it into the system and get us prepared. Every couple of years we go through our taser, which is where we rate the roads uh, and have that on for uh, community crossings and such. Um, the USI helps us every couple of years on that. If you guys are okay with that. And it's a task order and it's not to exceed four thousand dollars not to exceed four thousand yes okay. that helps you a great deal then you know what where to go what roads what yeah uh, the highway department actually goes out and we grade the roads and we get all the information gathered but this is a task order to help us uh, get it all uploaded into LTAPS and MDOT system that they use which is kind of complicated, and to be honest with you, I don't get it. <laughs> well, we've got a lot of roads. I mean, the book you give us is thick. Yeah. I mean, there's yeah. a lot to it. It's there's every segment uh, from each intersection to intersection is a segment. So there's there's 788 miles of roads in Fulton County, but when you figure each segment, there's a multitude of them. Now all that has to be uploaded into this system and categorized. There's quite a bit to it. Okay. Do we have any questions? Okay. I entertain a motion to uh, approve the contract with USI to help upload the PAGER program for not to exceed $4,000 fee. So moved. Second. All in favor? Motion carries through the bill. And that's about all I have for you. Or this morning. Okay. Short and sweet. Thank you, John. I just saw the Thank you. <laughs> There's a reason I like you so well. <laughs> Tree removal. Okay. Um, if you guys have decided how many of the trees out front of the annex building to remove. Did you guys have a chance to talk about that? Yeah. We're getting big. We're getting big. I don't know if you want to do it. I think it's a good idea to get rid of all of them. If we don't get rid of these over here, at least trim them and put back. I think Karen and I talked about one day about trimming things back around the whole building. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's a sewer or storm sewer over. Not on that side. It's just from the side. It comes side. directly out between the, the two trees, and that's the one on the end is the one that clogged it, but <clears throat> that other one has the possibility to get in it too. Yeah, but I'd say at least these two here, yeah. if you want to maybe trim these back this fall, and we do some stuff. Can, can they catch this when they get the tree across the road? That's what I'm going to try. Yeah. That sounds good to me. Take yeah. the two and trim, trim those back. Okay. Yeah, this, one, this one's getting big, so it's going to back pretty good. And on the one corner, you mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this but one here. So you want this side of the sidewalk you want trimmed, and these two you want removed? Yeah. West side sidewalk removed. Okay. The plane. Okay. Yeah. And we talk about trimming everything along the yeah. side mm -hmm. also, whatever yeah. they can. Yep. Because it's starting to get into the building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, everything? Oh, go ahead. Well, I hadn't got with you. I, I was, you and I met Dave Carr out here on the. Mm -hmm. uh, Face you around the building, uh, and we've gotten two quotes from uh, one from Dave Carr and one from uh, 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 Levi Brown. Uh, what did you say? Was it Levi? I thought it was Wayne and Good. Levi Brown. Oh, then you tell us Wayne and Good. I think I think I think I To replace all the face around the building and the soffit uh, and the entryway, there's a few places that are soffit around. It's starting to look its age, it's starting to come out. So 
Um, we had one quote from uh, LB, LCB Enterprises for $34,547 and a day car was uh, $21,400. So, um, then if that's something we want to look at. We've got money in your budget yet for that, do you know? Yes. I, think, I think you do, don't you? Mm -hmm. So, I don't know if that's something we want to. You gotta so, keep up with the building or you yeah, haven't yeah, fallen it down. So I know down. that so, sounds like cars pretty good give you a pretty good price. Yeah, and Dave's done a lot of work for the county, so it's not like he doesn't know what he's doing it's by any means. So yeah. So you guys I'm, you I'm okay with that. Or just mm -hmm. if you want to do that we have a motion for make a motion that we use the lower bed there at Dave Cars, get the patient take care of. Okay, I'll second. Any other questions from anybody? All in favor? Motion carries through. Okay, here we have Michael Ladd, I think. Uh, You're about to find out what's in the back. This is you this week. This is just a request, a piece of information. I gave you last time that we were together that uh, Blackbear would be underway fixed by the industry. Things not really bad news yet, but it's coming. Um, we have to put down a deposit with NIPSCO. That's uh, the plan that Brian's got right there. And it's in the tune of $66,685.85. And um, this is more, but as I said, information for you to consider. We have 90 days from June 27th to uh, get this done, and I've asked the city for half, or I will be asking the city for half. I've talked with Brian Goodman about it so far. Um, so that's really kind of all I've got for right now, is just, I'll consider, and I'll get you guys a copy of the contract so you can take a look at it and see what it is. But that's required before we ever get going. The other, the, the good news about this thing is as a customer comes in and hooks up, they pay a fee and the fee comes back. So this is, think of this more as a loan and not as a gift or, or anything because the money will eventually come back to so you. So when they pay the tap fee, it comes back? It comes back to you or okay. to split it, give it to the city, give it to you, you know, however it finally works out. So what we're asking basically is a loan. Do you have any idea what the tap fees would be for that? Okay. It's an good. I can try and find out. So. It'd be interesting that way you know how many buildings have got to go or how many people have got to go out there for you to show money back. There are um, holes that's putting in two uh, propane tanks at his site, Dan Holmes. Because he has not got next go out there yet, right? Yeah, correct. He, he's I interested in going, one. and that's why he's going with the uh, with the tanks. So it's surprising there's a there's a cap deal on that with the buildings. It's usually the usage is high enough that NIPSCO waives that. So I don't know if that's going to be the case, but we're not going to get our, it's just an FYI. I know in residential is kind of like that. They they size the house and if you've got to use enough, it depends on what it is. Yeah. I, the I, I don't know. I mean, it's, uh, I've seen that too. And it, it, would, it, would it be mandatory though? Would it, I guess I don't know how you make it mandatory that they would have to hook on or can everybody just set their tanks and not you, can do that. You, you don't want to kind of I know what you're saying. It, and yeah, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Dan's just doing what he's doing because he's anxious to get going. And uh, I don't know how long he's been out there. Uh, he's been out there quite a while. I, he had, uh, that's my understanding too. And um, so he's just gotten anxious. Is what he did. And I, you know, I don't blame him for that. Yeah, I get it. Get, get it ready, get it going. Uh, but like I said, this is just an informational piece for the moment. Okay. So we'll need to get some, get the right people together to sit and have a conversation. Good. Sounds like a plan. We'll bring it up next next meeting. Yeah. Like I said, you got 90 days to deal with this. One, so. okay. See you. Thank you, Michael. Thanks, Thanks Michael. Michael. <laughs> okay. Gail. You yeah, are you sure you don't want the sheriff to go first? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, you might need to get out. 
I don't need to get out. I'll bet that's on my head. Go ahead, Travis. I really don't have a lot of attention. She'd be a nice place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 69 inmates <clears throat> is what we've got this morning. Wabash County called last week. They've been having pushback from the uh, ICLU and the ACLU for overcrowding. They're in the process of building a jail, and they're supposed to, they were supposed to be done this summer. It looks like it's been pushed back to early winter. Um, so we took 10 of their inmates to help with their overcrowding at the original contract that you guys had signed last year at $40 a day. So we've got plenty of room. So what can't you do that with Wabash County? Wabash. Yeah. Um, federal contact contract for federal inmates went into effect July 1st. Um, we should get something probably next week. Let us know how many and, and when that's actually going to when we're actually going to start holding, but it went in effect July 1st. Um, <clears throat> Skeeter, he's retiring from the school league, has knew that. We're going to have a retirement party, small get together for him at the sheriff's office this Sunday, the 9th from 1 to 3. Um, I will email out invitations to everybody. Um, Fair weeks next week, we're going to get prepped for that. We'll have a booth out there for that. Um, our JCAP program, the jail chemical addiction program, is going to be starting up next week. Um, we're just doing the last final, final touches on getting everything done for that. Um, 200 West, I got a text from you. Um, there, North Olson Road, we're still having issues with kayaks. We've sighted probably a half dozen vehicles out there. Um, the interesting thing is they're parking outside of the ordinance distance um, of 500 feet, so the ordinance really doesn't apply, but their state statute says you can't park on the roadway, so we're just right on state statute. So one way or another, hopefully we'll get their, get their, yeah, get their attention and have them stop parking there. So. Um, other than that, feel, if you guys get calls on the weekends, feel free. All the guys know to go out there on the weekends. But if you get calls on the weekends, let me know. Um, and we'll send somebody out there and address it. So that's all I have. How much are our citations? I don't know. Yeah. Um, I, my guess is it's probably going to be like close to like a speeding ticket or something else. You're probably talking $170. Yeah. So. Enough. Yeah, it should be enough to get their enough attention. To get attention. So, yeah. It's weird that they're, are they going from there to Germany Bridge and why aren't they just coming uh, into Germany? I think uh, both. They don't go to, they go, a few might go to Germany, but most of them go all the way to lighters. The, the Walter because Walter Walter there's days Germany, there's week, there's days Germany is packed. Yeah. Or they'll so go they'll from go, Nominee to 200 West. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, they've got their distances figured out. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it used to be, I mean, the days when I was growing up, you had canoes that weighed three, 400 pounds that you couldn't. Mm -hmm. Pull up and down there, and you know now with these kayaks, you just throw them on their back, and they throw them in about anywhere. So, you know, it's it's not an issue until they crowd the road and things can't get through. So, um, we'll keep keep addressing that. So, yeah, I know on Bridge Thirty Two, we just finished. I came through there the other day, and there's like eight cars lined up alongside mm -hmm. right there. And they're, yeah, I'm, so, keep an eye I'm sure it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And if people complain. I mean, if people complain, and <laughs> they're parked out on the roadway. We're taking photographs of them and ticketing them. So, I mean, it's mm -hmm. and we'll keep doing it on all of them until. They get the hint at least get them all the way off the road or not park there. So, okay. thank you. Any questions? Okay. Anybody else want to go before game? Pop popcorn. Okay. It's it'll be a good one. So, <laughs> last week was EMA week. So um, I'll just start a little bit. Um, in reference to this week, your 4th of July tomorrow, uh, Akron's always a very busy and crowded area. Um, Craig will be working tomorrow as well as a multitude of our volunteers to alleviate the stress uh, from the Sheriff's Department so they can be at other areas. So Travis, they are at your disposal. Um, just be kind to them. You know? <laughs> yeah. So they'll be all over. Uh, we'll have some water out there as well. There will be two of our ATVs out there as well. One with the medevac. So uh, whoever, like I know Lutheran's going to be out and about so they can get in and out easily in the crowd. So your EMA office is in full force tomorrow. Um, so that's that. So last week, um, the new business in town, the mercantile. Um, I did get a few things where people were saying, you know, the, the traffic's really crowded downtown and so forth, um, which is exciting to me. Um, businesses, and like I said, with our volunteers and the EMA now doing uh, 
more than normal, uh, we can direct traffic. So there you have it. Great. So yeah. if you ever get any kind of complaints like that, we can uh, direct traffic. No big deal. Um, another thing is I met with Homeland Security. Um, one of the things, you know, this last year we're just looking at what the department is really supposed to be uh, doing and helping for the community and so forth. Um, you will see that realization come to light Thursday when we do the 10 to 1, our quarterly EMA meeting uh, within the district, but Homeland Security will be there as well as IPSC and they're going to talk about the recovery situation uh, with the counties that were devastated by the tornadoes. So um, it's not if, but when, you know, things happen here as well. Um, so if you're interested in coming, please do so, ask questions. Um, I know I'm gonna have probably, like I'm invited like life care and so forth. I'm gonna ask Hickory Creek and them to come because you know, those folks will be misplaced or if there's no electric, you know, what, what do you do with these things? So, in regards to that, um, IDHS came up last week and they sat down with me and there's a coordinates of three plans that are here for the county, and that's the HIRA, the Thyra, and the SPR. And those work together and um, I was diving into that and they give you scenarios, the what if scenarios. So what if the straight line winds took out a section in your community or a township? Then you go and you analyze how many people would be out of place without home and you know how what's the retention period for uh, putting electric back on? You know, what does that look like? What does that normally look like? And I think in the past. I will tell you, or even throughout the state of Indiana, people don't read that and realize the importance of putting those proper numbers in there according to your territory or your county population. So these three plans need to be done like on a quarter or yearly and so forth, and then those could be emailed to you and council, and then you can look at that financial side for council or commissioners and what it's gonna to take to regain um, the recovery of your county. So that's, uh, I did learn that last week. There was a couple of counties, myself and Allen County, that they said were very uh, proactive in asking questions and who, what, why, where, and why hasn't this been done properly and so forth. And um, you'll see that start to come to light as well. And that's very, very time consuming. And usually that's done uh, once a year uh, by October 1st as those plans for your county needs to be implemented. So, and like I said, what it gives, it gives you scenarios in different areas and territories and like say the whole town of Rochester and what that would take. So, it was very interesting, I will tell you that. So, with that being said, in the uh, EMA issues and and cleaning up stuff. We also had carry out and to look at the entire building. Um, so we are <coughs> adding to the budget and reference to the doors and the windows do need replaced. And I know you've heard me preach about that before, but um, Carrie can enlighten you on that a little bit as time goes by, but we did sit and discuss and since he is maintenance, I'm good with him taking the bids, the contract, I, I feel like, um, in my opinion or suggestion, like whatever contractors he's gonna use or bid for, there's no reason I should be in the middle of it. Just say, hey, Carrie, I need you to come out here, evaluate maintenance and uh, for the upkeep of this building as well. Um, we did notice we do need uh, gutters on the back side of the building, which is causing some of the issues uh, at hand, which I was gonna uh, tell Carrie as well. He did go out and fix the air conditioning problem or kind of get it out of the ground that was buried in, and you know, cleaned that out a little bit. So uh, things are changing a little bit out there, but it is um, very time consuming. I'm not going to lie. It was a, a three to four month cleanup, mm -hmm. uh, maybe like we thought last year. <laughs> so. In regards to that, I, I believe I don't have anything else to share. I just wanted to be able to, for you guys to ask questions and so forth like that. And um, I 
and needed to add to the budget for EMA and so forth. That lunch will be provided on Thursday. And it does, um, one last thing with that, with some of these plans and the participation in the LAPC with your resources, like police, fire, and EMS, it does make it beneficial when you apply for grants. They look at that. So if these folks are not engaged or um, implement the LEPC level, we don't get that feedback and that training in that, that does affect some things on there and in um, the remediation and the recovery and so forth. So it's, it's, it takes a group effort, I'm not gonna lie. Did you invite the health department for that or anything? Um, they're included in it with our LEPC, okay. but I'll, I'll say something again to them. I think it's well worth them looking <coughs> at them being there. I know they're going to have to get back. I, they are involved somewhat in LEPC, but I think they're yeah, going they to have a dedicated person to... They you and Don is usually on those conference calls, or okay. uh, she has uh, okay. participated. Uh, your hospital participates regularly, and um, you, you do have a great big group for LAPC. Uh, Dave knows that and especially will they do it at the yeah. quarterly fire meetings for training. It's it's changed drastically I will tell you that um, in regards to um, it's not followed like the EMA so usually you went to a meeting and it seems like three meetings we all talk about the same thing. It is not in this situation. EMA needs to be totally separate from LAPC. You may as a whole nother side of the bar. And even with night one, we just can't keep doing that. Because you've got to change it up. I mean, that's how you lose some of your folks as well, including myself. You just get tired of talking about the same thing over and over again. So uh, filling out the grant paperwork, there needs to be a sub-grant sub -grant writer besides myself. Um, I was in there. Um, signed in as both and that's usually how the EMA worked. Um, if I'm not around or financials come in, it really needs to be somebody from the auditor's office that signs off as well on these grants so they can get off, you know, sign off and print that uh, information out as needed. So I don't know why that was never uh, put into place like that. I really don't. Because I have a problem with submitting and finalizing the last grant, um, and then I have to wait on the homeland so you security. Need somebody from the auditor's office, or somebody else, like the financials or something. I would think to sign off on that. Because these go for the entire county. That I mean, that's what. Do you want to ask Christina if she's got any ideas on that? Like so if it's Chantal or whoever that's maintaining <coughs> those, should be able to sign like. Sub grantee, even for I would think for like our salary reimbursements, it's kind of odd that I'm the only signature on that. Okay, I can think about that. Yep. But that's that's all I really have in 911s. Uh, we'll just keep moving forward. And um, I did send John Stones an email that we we're going to go through with those other two protocols. We'll have to appropriate. Sounds good, Gail. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Okay. Jerry. Jerry. Yeah, four. Yeah, she sits in the corner. 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 In the corner. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Just to give you a little update on uh, what's going on in our office so far this year, we've had 34 families that we've served. Uh, June slowed down quite a bit from uh, May. It was very hectic in May. Um, so we've had 21 males and 13 uh, females that have passed away. Of that, we've had one undetermined death. Um, we've had 27 natural and then six of those were accidental deaths. And they're all different types of accidents. Um, we have had a couple of drug overdoses. 
Um, we've had three motor vehicle accidents of types. We've had one person falling down the steps. Um, and then with that, just to show you that we're not consistent with the types of drugs we use. They're all different types that are out there. Uh, one person had poly drug intoxication, and what that was was three types of drugs, uh, lamotrigine, gabapentin, and olozapine. So they had that blend or that custom that you know caused them. That, that was actually an overdose. That would be illegal, or would that be prescription drugs? Or do you the gabapentin can be prescribed, but they are going to be changing some laws on that because it seems like some of the doctors are prescribing that for other types of things than what its original intended purpose was. So that's something that will probably be changed, but yes, that is a prescription. And then we had another person that had uh, acute ethanol intoxication along with Delta 9, which is marijuana. Oh, wow. um, we had another person that had tramadol toxicity. So that would be another prescribed drug. We had two people with uh, cervical spine fractures and that's one of them was right up on C1 and that's like instant death because that's where all of your uh, vital organs, your respiratory, cardiac and all that's uh, centralized. Um, we had one acute fentanyl toxicity and then one acute methamphetamine intoxication. So you can see there's all different types there. Uh, so that's kind of what's going on with us right now. Um, I'll tell you more about our, uh, we had our uh, seminar and I believe, I don't know this for sure, but we had over 400 people there. I don't know if we've eclipsed Colorado yet, but we're at number two. And so I just wanted to let you know that. Um, that it was a great conference. Uh, it was the highly and best attended. So anyway, that's that's good. And I'll let you know more about the details. I don't want to talk a big, a long conversation today. Working on grants, the Indiana Department of Health has not been released yet, but I'm chomping at the bit ready for it because it's a little overdue. So hopefully that'll be coming up soon. I'm confident about that one. And then I'm going to be helping with the hemp grant and that's for our emergency management thing where we do our tabletops and that and that'll help to fund some things for our county with the different things we need so that'll be more challenging and so we'll see what happens because it's not just about writing and your ability to write a grant there's all this technical things and technology that you have to use and implement and be able to get in the systems so anyway be working on that too. Uh, I wanted to let you know also, I jumped around or off this, we've had five autopsies so far this year. Um, we've done like nine lab draws. So lab draws would be like uh, glucose, uh, troponin, D-dimer, um, those types of things. And then we've had uh, eight talks that I've been and then we've had five that's incorporated in with the autopsy, so we've had a total of 13. The tox would be mainly for the different types of drugs and components like that that uh, would be in the body. I also wanted to let you know that our laws changed uh, on Saturday, July 1st. We got some new laws that affect us. Uh, one is relative to coroners, but it's, all, it's enforced by our law enforcement uh, partners, and that would be people that are encroaching at a scene getting too close, they've got to be at least 25 feet away. Um, and if not, they can, they'll be asked to leave by, uh, you know, our sheriff's department or city police or whomever is on scene. Um, anyway, that's one. Uh, also, the toxicology screening will include xylazine, and that's that tranquilizer that seems to be gaining momentum here in our state. Luckily, we haven't seen any of that in our county yet, and I'm thankful for that. Uh, relative to the corner, uh, record keeping, uh, we're gonna be able to destroy and dispose of some of our records as long as they're electronically kept. Uh, we'll keep the hard copies on anything that might be of criminal nature or anything like that. 
Another thing relative is autopsy expenses. No longer can a county, like a person be flown out of here to Indianapolis or Fort Wayne for advanced medical care. And then if they pass, um, they decide they may <clears throat> would like to have an autopsy, but they have to at least let us know and talk to us about that too. Um, but it'd be nice to know that because sometimes we get surprises and a bill. So that'll be good. Uh, also, they've changed uh, the coroner compensation. Uh, they had a law that if you were a licensed physician, you got one and a half times what the coroner uh, actually gets in the county or what's designated. And they decided that um, the same amount of work is done by either person, so they would change that at that time. And the last one's probably the most important, and that's for our young drivers. Um, they now, uh, people with a learner's permit, must have an emergency contact on file with the Bureau of Motor Vehicles. So those are the, the laws that have changed and now are implemented and present. So I got a quick question for you. Uh huh. Brian was going over the budget a minute ago, and there was a line item for us for autopsies. Is there any reason why we should have any autopsy money in there? I don't see any reason. For you guys, you mean? Yeah. yeah. For your, for the commissioners, you mean, or for yeah, me? Yeah, for, for commissioners. Oh, I don't think so. Because you take care of it all, correct? Yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Yeah, that I don't know what that's like. I never that. remember seeing it, but. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we'll be we'll be all right with that. And I think we've got ample amounts. Now, last year we did have to get a little extra because it seemed like we had some, but we're doing very well. And we just had like the five that we've had to pay for so far, so. Okay. Okay. Any questions? Do you have a minute after the meeting that you and I can talk? Do you have to run out? Well, no. Okay. That's okay. 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 Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. Okay. So, okay, we have uh, <clears throat> the Board of Health. Public health funding for public law 164. Okay, this is a resolution for the uh, August of the Senate Bill 4. This is a resolution for us to opt into the state's funding, uh, additional funding for the health boards for 2024. We have resolution 0620023. It's a resolution regarding funding for the core public health services under public law 164. Whereas the Fulton County Board of Health has been advised that State Rule Act 4, which makes several changes to the administration of funding of public health services in the state of Indiana, was signed into law by Governor uh, Eric Holcomb on May 3rd. 2023 and is now designated as Public Law 164. Whereas the Fulton County Board of Health has been further advised that PL 164 makes the following changes or additions to Indiana law, among other provisions. Public Law 164 in summary defines core public health services for purposes of public health laws. Two, provides that the State Department may provide services to local health departments. Three, requires each local board of health to establish a local public health services fund to receive state funding. Four, provides a method of allocation of state funding to local boards of health subject to state appropriations. Number five, specifies a percentage of how additional funding may be expand, expended on core public health services. Six, allows the local health department to enter into contracts or approve grants for core public health services. Seven, allows the state department to issue guidance to local health departments. Number eight, requires the state department to make annual local health department reports available to the public. Number nine, changes the qualification requirements for local health officer and requires certain training. Number 10, requires a local health department host a position or contract for the provision of administration of core public health services 
for the last 30 days. 11. Requires the local health department to provide certain education for administrating a vaccine. Number 12. Uh, repeals provisions concerning the Indiana local health department. <coughs> Therefore, be it resolved that the Fulton County Health Department hereby establishes and creates a local health public, a local public health services fund to receive state funding pursuant uh, PL 164 report upon the condition that the Fulton County Commissioners vote to receive additional funding to provide core public health services pursuant to Indiana Code 16-20-1-12. Therefore, we have further resolved that the Fulton County Health Department <coughs> urges the Fulton County Commissioners to adopt any necessary resolution or ordinance for the purpose of accepting additional funding for the core public health services assisting in the Fulton County Health Department in establishing a local public health services fund and coordinating authorizing contracting or hiring for services to administer core public health <coughs> services. This is the resolution that the um, Board of Health they, they passed they under passed that that law to us. Yes. yes. So, you guys have any comments or you want to explain anything that with Looks like Phil's got some comments or some Oh, it's questions. a good deal. Uh, Ron and I went to the state called council meeting in Indy a week from last Saturday, and they were discussing that and about the funding that was going to be given to the counties if counties opted in, and they had to opt in by September 1st, so thank you guys. So, that, so good deal, good deal. We, we can use all the money we can get for the health department. Good deal. And I know the hospital has been working uh, with us. We've been meetings to see what services they provide that will help meet some of the criteria that the state had put out. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so there's and the other nice thing about it is the matching grant that we, the counties have to come up with. The health department's budget covers, it's large enough that it, it covers that. So we don't have to come up with any additional funds to cover this. So um, that makes it nice also. And, and Brian, you might mention, just so everybody knows, that um, salaries cannot be paid out of this grant. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just wanted to state it. So. Um, it's a good deal. I do not have anything to sign here. This no, is, that, this that, that was just their resolution. Send them on to us. We'll have to get a resolution and, yeah. and do our own resolution. Yeah. They've got a template to go by, I know. They do. Yeah. Yeah. But I want to be done next before September. Yeah. We'll plan on doing that at our next meeting. Yeah. I didn't want to do that, so it's just what's going on. So. Okay. Nice little addition check. Addition check. All right. So we'll hopefully deal with that next meeting. Okay, we have a Fulton County Redevelopment Commission appointment. Um, Fulton County Redevelopment meets three times a year, I believe we've met those. Um, like Terry Lee, the former uh, Beckwood director was on that. And um, I would- uh, He was our representative he, he on there. Was the representative, yeah. Mm -hmm. We have a school board member on there. It's a non-voting member. <coughs> Who is that? <coughs> don't you remember? I don't remember. Uh, Nathan, Nathan something. I can't, I don't know. I can't remember. It, it's just good. The, the, the uh, redevelopment has no money. The council has to uh, come up with money to pay the rest of that bond. There's not enough money generated in there, so there's no business to do. It's just three formalities that we have to meet three times a year. So right well with theirs. And we've satisfied those three. We've meetings. satisfied those three, yeah. So uh, we, we may have another one or two. We were trying to, Kiwana has a tip district that Christina's looking into. To uh, dissolve. Yeah, dissolve that because it's so far of a hole and it'll, it'll never, um, that's just some of the house cleaning that we're in the process of doing. So, um, did, did you raise your hand? Did somebody? Okay. Uh, so, I guess I need to make a motion to appoint Michael Lamb, the current the director, to that commission. Sounds good to me. I'll make that motion. I'll second him. He's willing to take it. Do what? <laughs> willing to serve. Just raise yes, your hand, Michael. Just, 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 just,
adoption um, on the agenda. I don't want to take action on it yet. I think we need more time to, um, I don't think I have it, to look that over. Um, I do agree with yeah. you. Yeah, yeah we so just it got it, so it came in. It's 100 pages, so it's going to take a little time to look through it. Christina wanted to put that on there. She's wanted to do a few things, and I told her to put it on here so we can have the conversation. So. I know Phil and Ron Dittman and myself and all that, so if you have any questions that can't be answered, ask Phil. Okay. Oh, fine. <laughs> <laughs> so we have that um, uh, coming up. Um, okay, have you guys had a chance to look over the minutes? Yep. Okay, I have the June 19th minutes. I'll entertain a motion to approve. So move. Second. All fair. Claim docket and then the disbursements for 6 8 to 6 14 is seven thousand six hundred and sixty six dollars and fifty nine cents. We have an insurance claim docket for the disbursements of uh, 6 1 to 6 7, thirty six thousand two hundred and sixty three dollars and eighty six cents. Payroll for six thirty, two hundred and sixty thousand eight hundred and sixty six dollars and seventy six cents with a payroll deduction of forty two thousand one hundred and ninety eight dollars and fifty one cents. Uh, this is the real tax, uh, the surtax that comes in fifty eight thousand two hundred and thirty six dollars and sixty eight cents. Solid waste, their distribution is $333,333.33. Uh, Council on Aging, the grant reimbursement, $85,971. Utilities, $15,958.68. Credit card, card member services, $8,547.83. We have the miscellaneous claims, which includes fuel, Posted. It's, just, it's just the various uh, claims throughout the departments. It's, uh, these claims are in everybody's budgets, just for everybody out there. Uh, $330,777.79. You guys had a chance to go over the transfer appropriation request. Any questions, Ms. Ennis? I think I did. We have uh, a transfer request from Soil and Conservation uh, uh, from Building Rent to Office Supply of $3,180. So this will not be utilizing the Building Rent account this year and need to reimburse soil and water for office supplies. Okay. 
and appropriation um, from the commissioners for contract services $14,451.80 for Shepherd construction and final waivers for the contract with pyramid and finishing the electrical work at the tower site. We have uh, appropriation from the commissioners um, from the local uh, coronavirus funds, uh, $500,000. Um, we're entered into an obligation with the uh, city on the ready grant for the Apache Drive project and the safe school sidewalk evacuation right along 14 west of Rochester for $500,000. Is that called for coronavirus? That's the same thing. Same thing. Yes. Okay. We have uh, appropriation from the highway department. Uh, King Bridge. We have Bridge 32 and Bridge 50. A total of $527,772. Appropriated two is 135 King Bridge. That was budgeted in MBH. Allowing uh, the 135 bridge to pay for the 23, 2023 bridge projects. You sent this in, right, John? You're, you're okay with this, right? Yeah. Can you repeat? I have, I have mm -hmm. three of here. 527,772. Yes. That one's good. Next one we have is from 1176 MBH for 527,772. One's just moving some money around there. Okay, and then this one is the highway 1176, um, 700,000 for the bituminous and mixed aggregate. Um, it's a group of uh, procurement monies into the account for chip and seal program and to cover. Uh, community crossings matching grandpa's. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Deputy Corner, Deputy Auditor. Deputy Auditor. Didn't know getting a job. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, here, there's $10.50. You guys good with that? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Travel authorization, is that for elected officials too, Brian? Have we clarified that or not? Um, I don't know why it wouldn't be. Okay. I just asked. Yeah. yeah. Should be, I guess. Yeah. Well, I think it'll be better. Oh, you're doing one at Okay. Um, yeah. We have old business. Where do you have old business? Um, we'll go ahead and name. Did, did Casey? She been sat back here. Did she? Have I, some? She shook her head no. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Do, right. do, do you want me to hit on anything? I can't. No, I, I just thought maybe you needed some. Okay, I don't have I'm to wait. Go ahead. Old business. Wouldn't like comment that we had a meeting down in Rashford the other day with Renter Services, and uh, unbeknownst to everybody sitting there, I uh, put it on Facebook Live. And so, for transparency, so that you can see, the last I looked, we had 462 views of that video of people watching, seeing, and it was. From what I understand, and Gail, correct me if I'm wrong, but Barry said that was the best meeting with the amount of attendance and the conversations and information that we received and feedback we got. 
That is correct, and then we did get a request, a few requests actually from the live video to host one in Kiwana. And then just a reminder, on the 20th, Akron has been advertising uh, that one, and we will have uh, reserves or, or EMA volunteers down there as well to make sure there's no traffic for. Not the South Florida Community Center. Is that mm -hmm. that? that? Mm -hmm. But it was, it was, I think, more well, everybody I've heard, it was very well received there. Right. Sure. It's, it's hard to get the public outreach out on social media in certain territories, which was discussed because the one gal said that she found out the same day, but we've been putting it in the paper um, on the WRI and, and putting it on social media and stuff. So um, Dave really advertised it down there in the area. So, yeah, it, you know, we don't get the shopper's guide down there and with the paper just coming twice a week and lack of subscribers. Um, there's a lot of people in the community just didn't really know about it, so that's why we put it on Facebook and we've got a lot of positive response and a lot of people have commented, not necessarily on Facebook, but personally, and thank you for doing that. Anything else? Holly? No business? No business? Okay, new business, right? Yeah. Uh, I was over at the courthouse the other day and they they was asking questions about who's moving where and if we're gonna when when, when is the VA gonna move over and security gonna go in or have we thought anything about any of that stuff or, or where are we at on that? Uh, I think probably the three of us need to meet the two judges. Okay. Uh, go over and see what their plan is to do and kind of get get our ducks in a row. So, I know the old probation department needs a little bit of tender love and care. Yeah. TLC. Yes, so we'll get the carry and get him over there too and kind of figure out how we can make things look better. And so I think the original plan was moving the veteran service officer and Title IV over in there someplace. And then the core security can move down to the near the entrance doors. And then they have a, an office that they need to hold somebody. It's all right there contained. Um, and I know the judges wanted to do they needed two or three conference rooms for attorneys. So I think it's kind of what they're wanting a lot of that space for. So, so we'll set up a meeting with the judges and yeah. probably carry and go from there. Get over there and figure out a game plan. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, the only other thing I got I, I will mention, insurance, health insurance is always a big topic at this time of year. Um, I notice most of you should do in your budget seeing that the increase is, is – uh, she had a pretty good increase put in there. I'm not sure it's going to be quite that much, but she has to budget for budgeting. She has to put enough in there to cover. But there was some discussion brought up um, on switching around, doing some different insurance, some different ways. Um, I tell you the truth, I wasn't on board with it yet. I didn't have enough information, but that might be something we want to, in the future years, if that's what you guys want to do, we need to more than just me. The insurance com committee is me and Pete and uh, Christina Schreiber and Christina Haas. I think if we're going to do something like they was talking, we need to have a bigger group to get more input because it would be a drastic change in insurance, which I'm not 100% fond of, but that's we need to get a more group effort than, than, than just me saying, hey, I'm not, you know what I'm trying to say. So just kind of give you a heads up that there is Nothing this year. Insurance will stay the same as far as I'm concerned for this year, but the talk is um, that there is some talk of doing some different stuff in the future. I'm done. Yeah, I wanted to present uh, some claims, if I could, that be new business. Mm -hmm. These would be for our bed and corners. Okay. 
these are the hard copies or the original. Did okay. you want original? The owners obviously probably need them. Right? Okay. But we can put them in the files here. So. Okay. Would you like to scan them to you? Or what yeah, you could. I have one other one that I'm making a special request. Um, this came in, I usually try to get them in either the same day or the very next day that I can. And this came in when I was at the coroner's conference. It's uh, for pathology associates, it's for an autopsy. Uh, I was not able to get over this last week, which I knew I'd already missed the deadline, which was the Friday. I was at the coroner's convention, so I'm um, hoping in, that you can help me with this too, as well. Okay. And it's just the usual uh, autopsy amount. Okay. All right. We'll look at that enough then. You know, no. you those, I mean, I, I, she sent them to me, right? Yeah, these were the ones yeah, we sent. Yeah, these were all sent. Yeah, the top the top of the oh, oh, okay. Now, okay. That's, that's okay. new. Let's keep those all together. Okay, okay. Um, what are we doing here? I just want you to review them. Just, just, we covered an autopsy. It, 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 needs to, it needs to be submitted to the auditor's office. So, so we got to wait two more weeks to pay any of these. Is that correct? Well, Is that what you're telling it, me? It's whatever. I, I just, um, and I'll take a little bit of, Point for I meant to get with you, Jerry, and I, I haven't got with you yet on um, some clarification on the contracts. We, we need to uh, talk to the State Board of Counts. We need to clean that up a little bit. So that's uh, so I, I just think we need the contracts first before we can pay these. This is just claims. That's just me. Holly, look at the uh, claims that she submitted. She's outlined her hour. I think the discussion was um, since I'm a county employee, it's by the hour down to like blood draws and uh, okay. book work and so forth that has been completed. Okay. okay. That's on the There's page. like dates, times, that kind of stuff on each person. If I just kept it consistent with everybody. Okay. Okay, so you get them all that way, is that Yes, right? all of them are done that way. And then for Gail's, we have when she's supposed to have done. Yeah, and everyone, it was not when she was on duty with her other job. Okay. There was one, and she's timed out on the clock on that, and that can be reviewed by the auditor or whomever would like to review it. Okay. I think Gail was the one that they was really after on it's clocking still, out, clocking in. Still so, the accounts. Yeah. And that's all in there. Well, I just like to be consistent, and something I keep track of anyway, and I have done that the last couple of years, since our office has expanded and we've got more responsibilities. Okay. And that's just due to the fact that because somebody got paid something one year, it may not be the same the next year, just depending on who can do the transportations and different things like that. Okay. Any questions? Okay, the only thing under new, Aubrey, did you have anything to do with um, I just had a request from uh, uh, RDP, uh, Mr. Toto White. Um, they were curious if we had a thousand dollars they we could help sponsor their stage for their festivities at their city hall. Uh, it's a sponsorship. Sponsor they have, but they were asking for some help. So, um, what your thoughts are? I mean, we can need to think about it. And next month, we'll or next week, we'll bring it up. And, uh, when, is it, when is it for? What's that? Kind of yeah. Oh, I think it's for the. Uh, it's one of the. She didn't say. That's why I wanted to. It's. Uh, <laughs> we've got two of them coming up this this fall, right? Yeah, I think so. So. My, you know, yeah, because I got a few questions. You know, is it? They just rent the stage, or they buy the stage, or what? what? And I don't know if it's a. It's a she said they call it a sponsorship, which she texted me, so I'm not sure what. If it's a physical, a more details on physical yeah. stage, or they're just needing some help with. Mm -hmm. uh, I yeah. Um. Okay. Any 
any new business on it. Yeah. Brian, just a reminder, um, next week it is fair week. Uh, we do have a quite a few meetings. That's with the safety ADA and Title VI. I need to get with Kerry as well. Um, he's not familiar with that. Who He should be appointed to that board. Um, I don't know if you, sorry, Kerry. Um, I don't know if you've got to say that in your public meeting. Um, I did forget about that, but that meeting is on Tuesday at 815 and then you have your 911 EMA, and then we do need to have an EMS board meeting uh, that following Friday. I did speak with Dr. Mann. He came in and uh, sat in our office for a few hours, listened to 911 calls, and he uh, asserted me that the Friday after 911 board meeting, he doesn't care that he would still like that to continue. I know Jay said that he didn't like that, but he didn't know where that kind of came from in a conversation, so he said just continue the way we were. I did forget to tell you that, so. Um, anyway, that's it. Anybody else new? <coughs> You're good, what's your recess? So good, so good. Okay, thanks everybody.